you know, I've always had this beautiful vision of having your own business and it's just like flowers and roses and all mm -hmm. perfect all the time and you have all this money just falling from the trees and you know and you have all this freedom and you can travel and do all that but I realized every business I had was other people's ideas and I just went along with it. Okay, so welcome to episode 77 of Yellow Colored Glasses. We have Jacqueline here with Saddle Brand Coffee, and we are very excited, I'm very excited, to hear more about her journey, her story, her brand, her business, the whole bit. Um, first things first, let's read a review. Uh, Warren and Mount's agency has been absolutely amazing to work with. Amanda went above and beyond to answer my questions, even after hours. I appreciate their flexibility and encouraging words. And that was from Shelby H. So thank you to Shelby H for an incredible review. Um, moving into our peak and our pit. So something that's going really well for me. What do I have? Do you have something? Um, we're kind of restructuring our business a little bit. So we have um, really exciting things coming. We're just mm. on the verge of just something so spectacular. Oh, I'm and so you're excited. excited. Yeah, I'm so I can excited. tell you're excited. <laughs> okay, so excited. I love this. <laughs> Bringing all kinds of good energy. Yes. Um, I'm getting, I've said, that I've, I don't want to say it again, but it just means the world to me when my routine is on point. Mm -hmm. Because it very much feeds into like how I feel personally about myself. Um, it feeds into how I show up in my work and for other people. Mm -hmm. So like my, the end of my last year was just like willy nilly drinking all the time, mm -hmm. like just wild, mm -hmm. you know, holiday stuff. Mm -hmm. And I've stopped drinking after the Vegas trip. We went to Vegas for like five days. I drank in Vegas. But since then, which was like second week of January, Sober Sally over here. Mm -hmm. um, so feeling really good about that. It's like a dry-ish January. Yeah, dry-ish. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's it's dry, but it did just rain. Yes. Like yes. ten hours ago. Yes. Yes. <laughs> We're still. The water is still evaporating. It's progress from December, so <laughs> <Yeah>. that's all. <laughs> um, a pit. I am. And so this morning I actually went to a networking event and I am, sometimes I just feel like I'm kind of awkward. <laughs> so, you know, I'm trying to put myself in uncomfortable situations to, you know, the deal, mm -hmm. like grow mm -hmm. and do better, be better, challenge myself. But mm, I just look back and I'm like, God, I'm awkward <laughs> I think everybody sometimes. goes into those networking things feeling awkward because they don't know what to expect sometimes and that's it yeah for sometimes sure sometimes they're very um, productive and you can get mm -hmm. good contacts mm -hmm. other times people are just chit-chatting drinking and you're just like what am I here for they're not <laughs> yeah. talking about business yes and then you feel awkward and you're like I want to go but I don't know how to tell them I want to yes. go <laughs> yeah know? yeah it's either productive or it's not you yes know? yeah so. yeah yeah um so Onward we, onward we go. What about you, Pitt? Um, winter's been tough. Um, mm -hmm. Just like, you know, with this weather lately, it's been slower. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why we have great things coming to overcome that because we will get more traffic, more business. Um, and I think people are just ready for d different things in mm -hmm. kind of my industry. Um, and around here, we need more choices and food choices and healthy choices. Mm -hmm. Um, so all of that is going to be coming. I mean, we launched our smoothies and stuff like that. So, um, but we have a whole other menu coming. So really Ooh, excited. Oh my God. First things first, I want to know how you ended up here. Like, how are you in Pleasant Hill? Did you grow up here? Did you? So far from Pleasant Hill. Okay. <laughs> I'm from Vegas. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm from Vegas. So I was born and raised there. Interesting. And my husband was born and raised there. Um, we, I kind of have, my mom lived here, my dad lived there, so I kind of lived in both places my whole life, but when I was 14, I chose to stay with my dad in Vegas, and I basically stayed there, met my husband, had my kids, all of those things, yeah. and then, um, about seven years ago, we moved out here, um, I had sisters and nieces and nephews out here, so we just kind of came out here, 
um, Vegas was getting really tough and I just, it's more of like a social scene instead of family yes. life, you know? And, yes. Um, it's hard to start a business. It's hard to have any real estate. It's really hard. So, um, when we came out here, we lived in Lee Summit to begin with. Okay. Moved to Pleasant Hill. And when we first moved here, I'm like, there's no like coffee shop that has a hangout spot that's easy, that has mm-hmm. good, good coffee, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and so, um, I actually had another business, but completely different. Really? I tinted cars. I wrapped what? cars. I did In Lee some, Summit? Yes. What was the company? Uh, Titan Auto Guys. I wonder if my husband went there because he's, he, he got his windows or what, what, I don't even know what you tent. Yeah. He got the, the whole, he tent, tented the whole car. <laughs> I don't know what he did. <laughs> the the windows. Yeah. So I pretty much did that by myself and for a long time. That's impressive. It, it was, it was really good money, right? Cause mm-hmm. I, I was really good at it, but at the same time, it's not a one man show and I could not keep up with business, which is, seems to be a good thing, but I could not find people, installers that were quality, didn't steal, yeah, showed up. Ooh. So, you know, yeah. it was just like, I, at a certain point, I was just this stress ball all the time, and you're just so stressed, you have no fun in your life. And so I was like, this is it's making me great money, but it's not worth it, you know? So I decided to shut that down, and then um, we saw this place open, and I, it had been vacant for a very long time, but I was like, man, it, it has been perfect, because eventually we'll have a drive through mm-hmm. so that side of the building, and we're just, there's so much potential <clears throat> with it, because we didn't know anything about coffee, nothing. We're not coffee snobs, you know, and so... <laughs> So we just knew there was a need for it, and that's why. Oh, man. Um, and um, I like the business side of it. I'm not so much like I have girls that know techniques and make latte art and all those things, but mm-hmm. that's not where my focus was. Sure. My focus was filling a need in, in this town and locally. Um, and so whenever we opened it, it was such a large space. Mm-hmm. It created a whole other opportunity with meeting places and event space and all those things. But on the other side of that, kids don't really have anywhere to go. And I have a teenage daughter that doesn't really have a hangout, you know, this is to do homework or meet with friends or whatever, because there's nothing really out here like that, yeah. you know? So that was m- more of the purpose behind opening it. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Um, what year did you end up in Lee Summit? Uh, 16. And then when did you come to Pleasant Hill? It would be, this year would be three years. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you've been, even in, I mean, Lisa, they're so close. Yeah. You've been here for a oh, long wow. time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, where did Saddle Brand start? Like, how did you start that journey? Because you're not coming from a place of having just this wild, deep love for coffee. Mm-hmm. You're coming from a business background, mm-hmm. which is different. Yeah. And you could make a really good argument that, coming from a business background is better mm-hmm. than mm-hmm. having some weird infatuation with coffee. Mm-hmm. So I am a entrepreneurial, um, I don't want to say that word. <laughs> oh my God, please. Like, no, it's bad. I want to, like, I want to, I want to <laughs> say what I want to say to you, but we don't know each other that well. Yeah. I want to say, come on, bitch. Okay, like, okay. let's talk. Okay, so I'm like an entrepreneurial slut. Like, I oh a lot yes, of I love that. That you know, I've always had this beautiful vision of having your own business, and it's just like flowers and roses and mm-hmm. all perfect all the time. And you have all this money just falling from the trees, and you know, and you have all this freedom, and you can travel and do all that. But I realized every business I had was other people's ideas and I just went along with Mm -hmm. it there was really no passion there it was like I fed into their vision what they wanted and then it never worked out because I wasn't really in it 100% so was this before the tenting yep so you were working for people then yes at that time no 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 I was I had um whenever COVID happened I was a bit a bartender so I lost everything I lost my job Um, And then whenever, um, I've had a lot of crazy jobs. I was a corrections officer for two years in a male prison, high security prison. Um, And then I thought I wanted to be a cop. 
So I tried to be part of um, KCPD for a whole year. I went through everything, mm-hmm. didn't get it, and then, but it was it was meant to be. Because sure. Yeah. After that, George Floyd happened, and I should have, I shouldn't be working in Kansas City. You sure. know, like yeah. in, in, at night, but. Um, so I thought I wanted to become a cop and that was my, my goal. Um, and I, I loved the aspect of corrections and law enforcement and all that. Um, but it wasn't meant to be. So, um, and so it was going to be hard on my family. It was already hard on my family being corrections. I work nights. And so, um, yeah. And then I just, my, I have family that have their own businesses, my sister, Mm -hmm. my dad, all those. Um, but I've always had that kind of like wanting to start a business but it was always somebody else's idea so this time around I knew there was a need for it but I'd already gone through my I don't want to say failures in business because it's not a failure if you learn something amen so I learned a lot from the car the car um, company that I had because it I mean it tested me all the time there was never like a breath of fresh air it was like stress or after stress and deadlines and thousands of dollars possibly worth of damage you know what i'm saying like it, the, the amount of stress that you're always under was which it sounds not, like you had no help i had no help i had no like help. no managerial help no. to no i was doing the business and the installs on oh, everything God. yeah so it gave me got, got to a point where i was just like I, I just can't do this but it taught me how to um create a business model that i'm not the forefront. I'm the background. So that's why when I started this coffee shop, I didn't want to work a shift. I wanted to be able to work on my business and have girls that know more than me about making lattes and, you know, the techniques and stuff Mm -hmm. than me. I don't have to know that stuff. Mm -hmm. I I have girls that do. And, um, and I love the business side of it. You know, I love being creative. That's my number one thing is I love being creative and having a shop the way it's designed is like i've never seen it you know we have a western theme it's um large has big tables and emphasis on large in my i've been in there a handful of times Mm -hmm. super cool setup yeah um i'm sorry i cut you off no no, that's okay i don't want to ramble (laughs) (laughs) where did you come up with saddle brand did you always have a vision for um western vibes like where did that come from so when we moved to pleasant hill we actually moved out to the country and my whole life i've always wanted animals and in vegas it's not really possible yeah so um when we moved there we got we have a barn and we have a few five acres and um we started out with goats and then chickens and now we have two horses and a mini donkey and i just and my daughter's a barrel racer and so we are in that world a lot and i just love it and what <laughs> is so cliche but i watch yellowstone and yellowstone made me have that like like it's funny <laughs> i love it and also the fact that you're in a fur I today i love i love i just love everything about that world um being gritty and just like yeah. being tough and yeah. being a female in that in that world and um, I don't ride like my daughter rides. She's way more braver than me. I like mm-hmm. to just trot on my horse, you know? <laughs> but yeah. she likes to like run her horse. Um, so I just love that world. I love horses. Um, and it's just become part of our, our life. So, yeah, that's um, so cool. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I am just so insanely impressed that you ran a tinted business <laughs> yeah. or a I don't even know what to call it. Yeah. That's not what this episode is about. So we're not going to get into it on this podcast. Yeah. But I am just, I don't mean that to, I'm sorry if that's like offensive. But no, like that is just offensive. crazy. My whole life I've had male driven jobs. I was a mechanic at Ford for a while when I was like 20. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, don't piss Jacqueline off. Like between the prison and- I know, I know. I'm just going to steer clear of you. I know. No. Um, That's cool. (laughs) Challenges. What kind of challenges have you faced in opening up this business and even bringing in some of the lessons that you learned whenever you were handling Mm -hmm. the tenting business? Mm -hmm. Um, I think scaling is hard for anybody. Mm -hmm. Um, But since we've opened in June... You know, when you when you start a business, you have so many ideas and things you want to implement right away, and mm-hmm. it's just like it's too much. 
So you're trying to run a marathon right off the line. And I've learned that um, trying to do cross country instead of a marathon yeah. is way better than um, anything else. And that's what gets business owners in trouble mm-hmm. is they they focus so much on the little things in the beginning, trying to get more because they're desperate. Yes. Um, and you cannot make decisions being desperate because Amen. you you spend money where you shouldn't. You're not running efficiently. You're wasting time. Um, and all those things combine into just a, you fail, basically. Um, and so I'm trying to run, you know, just this slower pace of letting the you know the slow times happen and yeah. and working next year when this winter happens I'll be prepared. Yeah. Not that in next week we're uh, we're desperate and we're running around crazy trying to figure out how to fix yeah. it. <clears throat> I know the time will come where we'll we'll be back up. We yeah. just got to get through it. Yeah. So those things where it teaches you okay in this moment how do I create more traffic? How do I get more calls? How do I get more exposure Mm -hmm. with my marketing and my networking and um, how do I up the sale? I mean, I'm, you know, I, every day I tell the girls like up the sale because if we can't get more people in the door, you got to get the sale higher. It's either one or the other, you know? Yeah. Um, And so whenever um, we have somebody in front of us and it's slow, we have to make the most out of that one person that's in front of us. Yeah. Um, and so I, you know, I try to do my best and I try to network and do all that when I, yeah. when I have time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we do have networking meetings there once a month, mm-hmm. which helps. Um, but other than that, I just try to step back and, and stop worrying about the little things because you, you have to look at the overall picture, you know, is that one little tiny thing going to make me money in six months? Probably not. It's not, it's not going to be this, but you can delegate that to somebody but in my spot, I want to be able to look at the big picture. Yeah. You know, I don't want to have to make these little decisions. And that's why I let my girls do whatever they want. I have, you know, a couple of different things that they do on their own. I don't mm-hmm. cover. I don't micromanage mm-hmm. um, because it takes less stress off of me. And I can focus on something that's yeah, really going to be impactful. Absolutely. You know? That's good. Mm-hmm. We have, I was thinking earlier, I feel like there's, you know, pros and cons to every industry. We're trying to expand right now. Mm -hmm. We're trying to hire someone. Um, We've got a really good team right now. Caleb, um, he works back here and he does such an amazing, amazing job. One struggle that we face, I should have said this is my pit, but I want to, one of the struggles is finding someone to get immensely invested in insurance. I mean, making this job look so sexy and make a career Mm -hmm. out of it. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think, you know, it sounds like your struggles were keeping people on. Mm -hmm. Um, So, I don't know, long story short, whenever you were talking, it just kind of made me realize that every industry is going to face a different devil Mm -hmm. in the hiring department, Mm -hmm. in the marketing department, in this department, whatever. What's my challenge today? (laughs) Technology. (laughs) Um, okay positives um with that trying to scale we're just trying to keep things fresh and new Mm -hmm. and I think every business and every industry tries to do that I don't want anybody to come in and you know six months later it's the same food the same drinks it's the same everything and they get bored Mm -hmm. you know um so we are launching a brand new menu um we're trying to get a lot of fresh grab and go items in there um yummy salad sandwiches um, everything you can think of, but I'm trying to do it in a way that's healthier, but still tastes really good. Yeah. Um, our smoothies are amazing. Um, we use first form protein, which is like a really good mm-hmm. protein. Aren't they in St. Louis? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. Uh huh. Um, and so we use that for our smoothies and protein balls. Um, and we have a now an in-house baker, so she does like all fresh gluten-free stuff. Um, uh, she does a gluten-free pumpkin muffin that's just amazing. It doesn't taste gluten-free at all. So I want to I want to keep it new and fresh. Um, I don't want in a small town people get tired of it or they just think it's better to go to McDonald's down the street, you know. Yeah. So um, changing it, but I'm always listening to customer suggestions on what they have been looking for, what they would like to see in this town, and we've done that with tons of stuff since the beginning: drinks, food. 
um, you know, stuff like that. So I'm always looking for suggestions and yeah, just trying to do something new. I will say every time I go in there, I the basket that's sitting there next to the I always get something out of that. Yeah. <laughs> and if if there were like fresh options, I would probably gravitate towards the mm-hmm. fresh op- options. And from a business standpoint, is the well, it doesn't matter. I was going to ask if the profit margin is different on either type of product. Well, now that we're doing a lot of more in in-house stuff, our cost is way down. Yeah. And so we're making more of a profit margin. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um so I know you said something about the drive through. Mm-hmm. I want to hear a little bit more about that. Mm-hmm. What that looks like, where on the building. So, and for reference, for anybody who is watching this who is in the Pleasant Hill area or comes through Pleasant Hill, drives through on their way to her work, home from work, it is what's the address? 1500 on 7 Highway. So the building is is at the end of a strip. Mm-hmm. So you've got access on the right hand side on the on the back. Mm-hmm. Where are you guys putting that? On the side of the building there is a uh, drive that goes from the front mm-hmm. exit off of 7 mm-hmm. Highway or entrance and then it exits out the back mm-hmm. on the alleyway. So that wall right there will be the drive through. So that'll be super easy. Yes. For people to just swing in. Yes. Okay, I love it. I, there's so much repairs like that have to be done on the outside of the building, so we have to get that first and then start working on the inside. So, um, what's your timeline? Do you have a timeline on that? Uh, hopefully by summer. I'm just uh, this weather is just, you know. Yeah. Stop the everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had something else I was gonna add on to that. Oh, did I see you guys post something recently? You're either doing like mobile orders or call-ins or deliveries or mm-hmm. something different recently. Not deliveries, but we do, um, you can order online, you can order um, on our, our Google or Facebook page, um, our website for sure, and um, you can get a curbside. So if you don't want to come in, you can just pull up and Ooh. we bring it to you. Can you pay online? Yeah. That's what I should have done. Yeah. I was telling her before we started the podcast, I said I should have like called you and ordered something thinking that I wouldn't be able to pay at mm-hmm. the time that I called you, but mm-hmm. now that, that resolves that it's issue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're just trying to make it as, you know, as functional and easy for people instead of going to get something through fast food. <laughs> yeah. Or like a gas station. Mm-hmm. And okay, can we take a moment? Let me tell you guys something. I would consider myself as a coffee snob. Mm-hmm. Okay, what did you say? Slut? I'm a coffee <laughs> slut. <laughs> I am a coffee slut. Yeah. I love my Nespresso machine at my house. It gives me the bougiest ass uh, espresso mm-hmm. that you can imagine. Mm-hmm. Love. Mm-hmm. So good. Mm-hmm. And my, my whole point is that there are some coffee out there that kind of fucking sucks. It, it does suck. <laughs> I mean, it does just suck. Straight up. Like, mm-hmm. but this coffee is very good. And I have been particularly, there's, it's always weird going into a coffee shop because the, the company always like fabricates their own like flavors mm-hmm. and you just don't know, mm-hmm. but that's kind of a shot in the dark. And then everybody's got like their staple, like, oh yeah, give me a vanilla latte. Like, you mm-hmm. know that that's like something that you get at every coffee shop and it tastes like your vibe. The specialty coffees, are so good. Mm -hmm. I've tried like three or four of them. I have not tried all of them. Mm -hmm. But they are all so good. There's a cinnamon one. Unless you've changed the menu. No. Okay. No, not the special drinks. The the cinnamon one. Mm -hmm. And then the one with marshmallow. What's that one called? S'mores? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. (laughs) So good. So if you are in this area, drive through this area, please, for the love of all that is good and holy, stop by and check out their coffee and... You have to. You have to try it. It's so good. You can tell that it is nice espresso that is being put into the coffee. It's not some watered down bullshit. It's good coffee. Mm -hmm. It is well made coffee. I just have to really like hammer that home (laughs) because there is some really bad coffee out there. Have you ever had a Keurig coffee? Yes. I can't do it anymore. Because it tastes like water. I will do it, like, if I'm camping or something, but, like, that's it. Okay, that's yeah. desperation. <laughs> that's desperation. I have to have coffee. It doesn't matter what it is, almost. But, yeah, I, I went through a tasting of, um, 
our beans. I have to give a shout out to our, our bean guy, um, Elios, and he's not a bean guy. He has his own shop, but his mission statement, he's um, he opens a, a shop in the middle of horrible areas in Kansas City. He has one in Detroit, um, and he helps the community, basically. Mm -hmm. So he is a pastor. He um, gives free coffee and free food, helps the community with meetings and uh, mental health and addiction and all these things, homeless people. Um, and so um, he just has become, like when we first opened, he was our mentor. He got us like the right equipment and got us what we needed and gave us all the information we needed on the technical side. And um, he's a great guy, but he is out of Kansas City. I wanted something local. Sure. And um, so we went through a tasting and our we roasted a certain way. We have beans from a certain origins um, all blended together. And so it's our own special blend because I didn't want something oh. that was oh tangy, sour, bitter, watery. So I went through and tasted everything. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. I kind of... Whenever we were talking earlier and you were saying that you were more like, you know, your brain is business. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I thought maybe you would have had someone else do oh, that. Oh, no. Good no. for you. That is very cool. Yeah. I love that. I I've love been that. to a lot of local shops and it's it's almost like a tangy, sour kind of coffee. And I, I, I just can't do it. You know, ours is very smooth. I would have never been able to describe it like that, mm -hmm. but now that you put words mm -hmm. to it, that is very much mm -hmm. what it tastes like. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I, I'm, I don't know if this is the right word. To me, your guys' is a little bit more nutty. Mm -hmm. It has like a warm, nutty type Chocolate of like caramel. undertone mm -hmm. to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Of course, when you add in your syrups, mm -hmm. you're gonna be getting those flavors too. Mm -hmm. But that is, I mean, yep. it's my vibe. Yep. I, it is so good. It's mm -hmm. not watered down. It is just premium luxury, so good coffee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, oh my Thank God. You. We can Thank sit. You. Yes. <laughs> Please take it. Take Thank all you. of it. You have to. Thank you have you. to. What were some surprising positives that has come from I this think, endeavor? I think the um, customer reaction, and I, now that we have been open for a while we have customers that I don't think of them as customers more like friends coming in you know mm, yeah. um, but the, the even when it's somebody I've never seen before um, give us compliments or say this is like so different or this is what this town needed or anything like that I, I, I knew what we were doing was great but then when you hear it from people in this town or even people driving through that don't live here and say it's awesome mm -hmm. that really like you know it it gets me every time whether it's a review online or anything I just I love it I love that part of it yeah yeah so, so. cool yeah the relationships piece especially being in a small town mm -hmm. <laughs> you've gone from like Vegas mm -hmm. mega big mm -hmm. to Lee Summit mm -hmm. big to small town yeah yeah. And so you're you're you you've definitely had like a variety mm -hmm. of personalities, mm -hmm. it sounds like. Did you ever own a business when you were in Vegas? Uh no. No? Mm -hmm. So you owned your businesses mm -hmm. here? Mm -hmm. I'm sure I, yeah. Anyway. Well, what else can we I have a question that's gonna prompt an answer from you. Okay. What is coming? So we have a new menu. Um uh, we've kind of redesigned our focus. Um, and I wouldn't say we're turning into a restaurant because that's not what we're doing. We're just trying to be a coffee shop with new, exciting options, mm -hmm. um, healthier options, and grab-and-go options. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a kitchen where we're grilling up burgers in the back, mm -hmm. but we want to offer salads, multiple different salads, grab-and-go sandwiches out of the cooler, um, everything's fresh made daily, mm -hmm. bakery items made fresh daily, and that will be a rotating menu, you mm -hmm. know. Um, we have a couple of hot options, um, but that does, we're testing right now. Yeah. And so, um, but it will be healthy for sure. Um, no grease, no nothing like that. But um, that, that would be what everybody has been asking for. Because there's really, in this town, there's really not really any healthy options yeah um and especially yeah. grab and go unless yeah. you're at the gas station that's true so um i i think that and i know that this town will welcome that mm -hmm. but 
what my focus is is to use really good ingredients and quality ingredients and the price might be a little higher but i think once people taste it and really see it they'll they'll pay that little extra because going to mcdonald's you're still spending 20 to 30 dollars for a couple people yeah you know and if you get a healthy sandwich or a healthy salad or you know something that we offer It'll keep you full, just like McDonald's will, but it's the same price, maybe, you know? Yeah. But it's way healthier ingredients. Um, we don't really skimp when it comes to that. I try to source, like, local things that we can um, bring in, whether it's produce, whether it's spices, whether, you know, anything. Um, try to do locally first and then outsource that. But. I love that. Mm -hmm. And now that, like, I've rambled on about the quality of the – your main product, mm -hmm. the coffee, mm -hmm. I feel like there's so much credibility established in developing these new dishes. Mm -hmm. I don't know, products, mm -hmm. I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, what does your testing look like? So, How extensive or inextensive, like non-extensive is that? I just try to create a menu based on things that I can get all the time mm -hmm. because we've had items that you know, where we get some more somewhere else and they discontinue, they can't bring them or whatever. And it, it, it makes the customer upset because that's their favorite thing on the menu. Yeah. So having more control over the menu is my number one priority because, and, and lowering costs by doing it ourselves, but we can change things. We can add things. We can, you know, do a whole bunch of stuff with it. Um, make, you know, things that are gluten free, which is hard to find. Yeah. Um, you know, and we're trying to do dairy free options and, um, you know, all those things. So, um, with testing it, we just try to, we, we make it, we have our staff taste it. Sometimes if it's, um, on a day where we have customers in there, we'll just have them taste it and see what they oh, think. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So, um, we've had a really good response from our baked goods, our gluten-free options. Um, I'm not gluten-free, so I want somebody to taste it that is gluten-free sure. and, yes. you know, love it. But even me not being gluten-free, I loved it. You know, yeah, you and might so, be a harsher critic. Right, exactly. Yeah. So um, I'm always taking suggestions from customers if they taste something, if they look for something or they want to add something to a menu item mm -hmm. we have. Um, but, yeah, having the freedom to really just be creative with it and um, use your own ingredients and you know where they come from is is my priority. Yeah. I, um, I love that you're doing it in-house. Mm -hmm. I really feel strongly that... Anything that you guys make in house is always gonna like be so much better than mm -hmm. prepackaged stuff mm -hmm. that you would get at like a Starbucks mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I love Starbucks, so no shade to Starbucks, mm -hmm. but I just feel like there's a fresh element mm -hmm. that is so unworldly obvious mm -hmm. in those items that are prepackaged like that. And mm -hmm. there's a there's a time and a place for them, mm -hmm. you know. But having stuff fresh, baked, made, put mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. like, I think that is essential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm excited. I'm What's excited the, too. do you have a timeline on that? Um, in the next maybe week. Oh um, my. Yeah. Oh my. I've been working on this for a while. This is like breaking news. Yes, yeah, breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. So by the time this will be up on Wednesday of next week, mm -hmm. live by then. Uh, I would say end of next week. Okay, so we yeah. are gonna be. Oh mm -hmm. man, that's exciting! Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to stop in next late next week. Yeah. Um, so I can give something a try. Yeah, yeah. For so, sure. what else can we? What is like super important for the audience to know? To know about your brand, your business that you're building. Um, what is something really important that you want to share and exit with? Um. You know, we are a small business, and so there are times where um, people come in and they're, they they don't know how small we are, you know? Yeah. But I want everybody to know that, like, every small business has their struggles, mm -hmm. and they have, just like you have an off day where something might not be quite right, but don't fail them. Don't mm -hmm. yeah. not come back because of that one thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 
being new, we're trying to figure out our schedule and, and we have low staff sometimes and then we have too much staff and then, you know, or we don't, we're running out of an item or something like that. Yeah. And that is always going to happen in the restaurant business because your inventory just, mm -hmm. it's an everyday order thing, like constantly. And I don't want anybody to not try us out again if something like that happens, yeah. you know, but, um, our staff is excellent. Our customer service is excellent. Um, if you ever not like anything, we'll mm -hmm. remake it for you, um, whatever you need. But, um, yeah, we, you know, if one month we have a different menu, the next month we'll have something different for you. Just yeah. keep trying this. So Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that. I can attest to the struggles in mm -hmm. the beginning and try to figure it out and trying mm -hmm. to figure out, okay, where, where am I? Where's my best place to be? Mm -hmm. Because I've tried being over here like a handful of times, and I don't know that that's the best place for me to be. Mm -hmm. So anybody who experienced me on that day, mm -hmm. I don't know that they got the best out of mm -hmm. me. You know, I don't mm -hmm. know if they saw the best version of Saddle Brand or Warren and Mount's agency mm -hmm. because you know you just kind of caught it on a bad day. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Simultaneously, as a business, it's our duty and privilege and all the things to show up and do our best. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody who is currently supporting Warren and Mount's agency or is a customer to Saddle Brand, it is greatly appreciated. Both are small, family-owned businesses, and we're just hustling away, working away. Hustle, hustle. Yes. Where can people find you on the interwebs? Um, we have our website, saddlebrandcoffee.com. Uh, we have our Facebook, same thing. Instagram, same thing. Um, we're always looking for reviews. Um, you know, even if you just stop in, our main, our main concern is just your experience when you come in there. Mm -hmm. So if you can leave a review, comment on Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, um, we love it. We love yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, check them out. Again, I will leave all of the Saddle Brands location, phone number, website information in the description box down below so check that out check out their website check out their menu if you can try the s'mores try the s'mores there's a cinnamon one try the cinnamon one what are the actual names because i am not letting these people know what the actual uh the cinnamon one you're speaking about is cinnamon roll brevet okay um and the s'mores latte and any of those you can get hot iced or blended but i'm an iced all year girly so oh i love that yeah. for you <laughs> i love that that's not my journey yeah <laughs> i love that for yeah. you um yes check them out and yes we will see you guys in the next one